Hello, how are you? So choosing a state management for Angular can be a bit confusing for beginners and experienced developers alike. But my new default for state management in Angular in 2024 is the NGRX signal store. Now, remember, this is NGRX signal store, not the global store. So why has that become my favorite? In this video, I'm going to discuss just that. And as an example, I have refactored my Angular dashboard, if you remember that from one of my earlier videos, a series of earlier videos where we built this. And this has some state about managing the widgets and changing the positions of the widgets and the view state here, edit mode and view mode and the widgets here. So you can see there's a lot of state management. And I found that it was a really wonderful experience. It really cleaned up my code and it has helped me in preparing the code for actually connecting to a backend in one of my future videos. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the reasons why I love the NGRX Signal Store now for managing state in Angular applications, especially if you are using signals. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I want to discuss and the first benefit of using NGRX Signal Store is that it is so simple to set up, all right? Literally, all you have to do is you have to create a new file in which you need to store your state manager. And uh, so, for example, in my case, I have kept it in my dashboard because I wanted to keep it local to my dashboard. Uh, I have kept it in my dashboard folder here, you can see. And in this dashboard uh, store, all you have to do is you have to give a type of your state, the state that you want to uh, store in this uh, store. And then you give an, uh, a set of initial state. And then you can use a sort of function-based creation syntax, which is really intuitive and which also facilitates and one of the main reasons to use this was to actually facilitate tree shaking. So if you don't include any functions here, it's not going to get included in the bundle. And that's really great for performance reasons for very large applications, all right? So uh, you can see that we just export constant dashboard store and we just uh, use the signal store function to define the signal store here. And initially you can see that we just give the only thing that is necessary is to actually give the state and we give the initial state with state here as a parameter. So that is going to initialize your basic dashboard store. And the second thing is that, and this is one of the main reasons why I love it is because it is so well integrated with signals. And you know that signals are the new sort of the upcoming, the sort of the future way of building Angular apps. So this is really important for you if you want to future-proof your app. It's really important that you use something which is well integrated with signals. And what do I mean by this well integration with signals? Well, as an example, I'm going to show you a sort of a settings state that I'm storing in my dashboard. Now, I'm not showing you the widgets currently. I'm going to show you in the end because I'm using some other way of uh, managing the widget state here. But let's say we uh, manage this simple setting state here, which contains a mode. And this can have either a view option or an edit value. So if, if on the UI, for example, if I show you, so there is a button toggle group here. So there's an edit mode here in which you will see these uh, cogs icons or the settings icons in which you can change this. And I wanted to create a view only mode as well in which we don't see this so that the user is not allowed to do that in that case. All right. So how to manage a simple state like this? So really easy. You can create a mode directly as well and the top level. But in my case, I have created a nested mode as well here. So I have grouped the state that I would consider as um, as settings for the dashboard because I might need to add more settings in the future. So I have kept a settings object here in my dashboard state. And within that, I have kept the mode state. Now, the great thing about this is that any state in the NGRX signal that you define is automatically going to be a signal will be able to be accessed as a signal in your Angular components wherever you want, wherever you have injected your dashboard. Okay, so this will be out of the box and you don't need to create any special selectors for this purpose, which you might need to do in your component store or in your global store in NGRX global stores. And the second thing is that not only it allows you to have signals for the top level state, but also this nested state here. So if you declare a state in this way, directly in the form of a nested object here in the NGRX signal state here, you can actually also access the mode as a signal directly in your component as well. So as an example, you can see that I have a mode here in the settings. And then if I go in my dashboard header, for example, where I am using this in the mat button toggle group, you can see that I have the store and I am accessing the settings and then within that the mode signal separately. 
and that is really important because we want to granularly use specific states in specific places in our different components and why is it important to keep it granular because angular signals has a built-in feature called memoization now memoization means that angular will not re-render the application if the signal has the same value so that is built in into signals because unless the signal changes there is actually no utility in re-rendering the angular template so in this case for example if we only change the mode then this mat button toggle group is going to get updated it's going to get re-rendered but if for example we change any other settings in the um, dashboard store it is not going to update the mode or update this mat button toggle group or re-render it again because it is not the mode setting that has been changed all right so this so keeping this deep signal this is actually called a deep signal a nested signal in ngri signal store is really important for that purposes and can really lead to performance improvements in really large complex applications okay so just as an idea you can also use settings here directly so this is also a signal and signals within this will also be signals so it's really handy to use and it's all out of the box functionality so let's switch back to mode here so this is the state that you want to keep explicitly define the state here what if you have derived state so you want state that is derived from some other pieces of state so in my case for example we had these widgets we had these available widgets and then we had these widgets that have been added on the ui so this is a perfect case of using computed in our case the signal store actually provides a ready-made functionality for that and we can use the with computed section to actually define our derived state here and once we define these derived states these are also going to be accessible as signals just like normal states in your angular components so i have created these widgets to add and added widgets computed and i am actually using the order signal which actually represents the order of the widgets and i'm also using the entities i'm representing the widgets collection as an entity by using a custom store feature which i'm going to discuss next so i'm just combining this here and i'm showing this on the ui so that we can correctly order our widgets on the screen all right so added widgets you can see here that i have defined it as a computed and i can use it directly in my dashboard component here as you can see here like this great so this is great for adding derived state in your dashboard store and again it's using the inbuilt computed functionality that is provided by angular the next thing i love is that how easy it is to actually update the state or change the state in an ngrx uh, signal store so there is a with method section as you can see here which will contain all of your functions that you use to change the state and to change the state in ngrx signal store it is necessary to keep this within a function so that all of the logic to change the state actually is encapsulated within the store itself this is really great for testing purposes so that your component actually becomes dumb and you don't actually need to add any logic to that so if i show you an example here for example the the same thing the settings the mode that we want to change if you want to change that we can actually see the set mode function here now this, you can see that it's a simple function and this path state is basically the main function that we use to actually update the state in the ngrx signal store so you give the store the, as a first parameter and the second parameter you can give or second or third you can give any number of updaters that update the state or you can also give the direct object itself and this is since this is path state it's only going to change that portion of the state that you have specified in the object here you don't need to give the whole state here okay so really simple and it, since it's a simple function you can simply call this as an example you can see the dashboard header i am calling this set mode directly in the change event handler and passing in the new mode value all right so really simple to use just like a function is you don't need to call any actions as you need to do in redux so it's really quick to implement and it's quick to use as well okay but that's not all because you can have different types of methods so this is a synchronous method uh because it is directly changing the state without uh, relying on any network request or anything like that but for example if you have the fetch widgets you can actually convert this into an async uh, function as well and you can add a weight to this for example if it allows that well currently it doesn't allow it so you can you can have asynchronous functions 
and you can have synchronous functions and you can also have reactive functions which I'm going to explain in a bit but before that you can see that we can convert this fetch widgets to async and then you can use it just like a normal async function in your component if you want to do that all right and then above here you can see that I have also refactored the service which uh, previously was encapsulating all of the things in one place I have divided it into a data service and the dashboard store so the data service is basically just responsible for conducting network requests and now in this case I'm just saving this in local storage for now but I'm going to refactor this in the future versions hopefully with you guys to actually convert this into a real application with integration with the server side so in a signal store you can actually provide any of the service just by using the inject function here and you can use any of the external services that you would like to use to fetch the data or, or you know save the data so I'm using this data service here for example to fetch the widgets to fetch the order of the widgets and then I am also using it in the save widgets here as you can see and the save order here now for the save widgets and save order notice that this is an rx method now an rx method is a reactive method the special feature that an rx method provides is that it can actually listen to changes automatically so if you for example send in an rx method an observable or a signal it is going to the function is going to get called whenever that signal changes or whenever that observable emits a new value so it is reactive so in my case for example i wanted to save the widgets whenever the widgets uh, collection changed in my uh, application because i wanted to save it to the local storage so i have set it up as an rx method and then in the on initialization hooks which is actually called when the and your signal store initializes i am actually calling the save widgets with the signal itself notice that i'm not sending it as a value here i'm sending the signal itself and this ensures that whenever the signal changes or whenever the widgets collection changes this save widget is going to get called again and my widgets are automatically synced with my local storage so this is sort of like an effect this mimics that behavior but since effects are not recommended now to use for business use cases as recommended by the angular team because of various reasons this is the perfect way to actually react to different signal changes and do things in response to them all right so an rx method also integrates really nicely with rxjs and as you know as angular developers we are very used to rxjs for especially for asynchronous operations rxjs is really powerful for asynchronous operations only so in this case this limits the rxjs usage to only the rx method so this is all about the syntax for the signal store and you can see that it's really concise really clean i have my functions nightly tucked away in their own functions in the with method section i can easily go in the method section to change things to add things i can add my state here and it will be available as signals automatically but what is actually the ngrs signal store so either it is a local state or is it a global state well it is by definition a local state and a local state means that it is not tied to the global application so it is not provided in root you can provide uh, provide this signal store as a root store as well making it into a global store but by default it's not a global store but that doesn't mean that you can't use it for your application level state so i really like this usage where it is flexible enough you can actually use it at any level so you can use it at the level of a component for example i can use it at the level of just a channel analytics component if i wanted to to manage this state i could use it to manage the state of the side nav separately and it's going to remain contained within that state uh, within that component and also i can use it for example throughout this dashboard like i am doing it right now so if i for example show you this is a dashboard store and i'm using it in the dashboard component which is the main dashboard component and you can see that I have added it in the providers. Now this means that whenever this component initializes, for example, when the root is loaded, only the, the dashboard store is only going to get initialized at that time, all right? And whenever this is going to, this component will be destroyed for whatever reason, the dashboard store is going to get destroyed as well. So it's linked to the dashboard component. So this is sort of a local component, you can say, or you can say it is sort of restricted to the dashboard itself but you can actually also keep it in the app component here so if you keep it in the app component here which is the root level component of the of your application you can actually have that state and use that state wherever you want in the application effectively converting it into a sort of a global store okay 
So I really like this flexibility of the signal store. One last thing, and that is a cherry on top. This is something really innovative about the, the signal store is the use of custom store features. All right. So if I tell you the concept behind this, so each of this width meter here, this is actually a custom store feature. So each of this width parameter basically adds a set of state and a set of methods and functions to the store that you want. So you can actually create using this same methodology, you can actually create on reusable pieces of state management that you can keep in some other file and you can actually use this in multiple stores. You might be wondering why I don't explicitly define the widgets state here or the, the widgets that are shown on the dashboard is that I am using the built-in entities custom store feature and here is signal store. So there is with entities custom store feature here which is really useful for handling collections in NGRX Signal Store. So it encapsulates all of the CRUD operations that you need. And since in my widgets, I was actually just doing the same things. I was creating a widget. I was deleting a widget. I was updating a widget. So I decided to use this to actually make my code more concise and clean. So I'm importing this, as you can see, from NGRX Signal Entities, all of these and the with Entities Custom Store feature. This comes bundled in with uh, the NGRA signal store, so you can use it whenever you want to. And you can see here that I have declared a with entities and I have given a widget as a type. So it is going to be a collection of widgets. These widgets actually represent my dashboard widgets, the widgets that have been added to the dashboard on the UI. Not these widgets, these are going to be just derived from these added widgets by simply removing the widgets from the whole directory of the widgets that we have, all right? So if you go back to the with entities, you can now see and you can now make more sense of the code here and why I have entities written all over in different places. Now these entities basically represent the widgets that I have added. And in the with method, you can see that I am using the update entity function of the custom store feature. And uh, so this custom store feature, once we added this, all of these methods, update entity and all, and all of the state called the entities and the entity map, which is actually a map of the collections that we give. These become accessible to any of the methods that you need or to any of the computers that you need. This is a state that the custom store feature adds to your signal store itself. All right. So it's really nice way to encapsulate some common functionality and then use it across different signal stores for your different components. Okay. So you can see that I'm using update entity, so it has really simplified my code a bit and I had to refactor my code a bit to separate out the order of the widgets because it was difficult to encapsulate the order also inside of that. Previously, we were using just a reordering of the arrays, which was a bit difficult in the entities collection pattern. So I have kept the order separate and in the added widgets, I am just merging those orders combining them with the entity map and getting each of the entities from the collection and then showing it on the screen. So all in all, it has really resulted in clean code. And if you want, you can also create your own uh, custom store features. Okay, so this was all about the NGRX signal store. And I hope you got a good grounding, a sort of a basic overview of all that the NGRX signal store has to offer. So in one of the future videos, I'm going to take this further, this refactoring further, and I'm going to add some real functionality to the dashboard service so that we can actually save our widgets and we can get our widgets from the server side. And also in a future version, I make it uh, specific to the user. So for example, if I log in, I'm going to get a different set of widgets. If somebody else logs in, you will get a different set of widgets on my dashboard just to showcase the, the kind of things that we can achieve with the framework that I have for this Angular dashboard. All right. So if you want this latest version, it's updated on my shop. You can get this latest version. And if you get this right now, you're also going to get all the future versions for free. So if you're interested in such a project for your own projects, the link is given in the description. All right. So um, thanks for watching. And I hope you like this video. Uh, please like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And spread it and share it with others so that uh, others can also benefit from all of this information. Thanks for watching and I'm going to see you next time.